Hey guys, Desletter Magic here with an update on how I think World War Bolas is going to end. It's all really coming together even though we're only on like Act 3 or 4 out of 6. So first of all, Finale of Revelation uh, pretty much confirmed what everybody suspected. And by everyone I mean the one leak from one person I heard about like 3 or 4 months ago. So the flavor text was, Ugin saw the gem that connected Bolas to his meditation realm as the key to his brother's downfall. And you may recall that Jace's triumph said his triumph was not in outsmarting Bolas' plan, but in understanding why ultimate power is self-defeating. So the Elder Spell works, it goes off, he absorbs a bunch of sparks, and then because he became so powerful, somehow they're able to do something with that and then trap him on the meditation plane. Pretty clear as day that that's what happens. But how and why? Well, a better question to start with is, why did the mending happen in the first place? It's because planeswalkers were too powerful in the storyline and Wizards was sick of it. But why did they say it happened? Without a fourth wall break. Well, all over Dominaria, and to a lesser extent other planes like the Dead Zone and Ulgratha, there were these uh, time rifts that kept opening up. I'm sure it's somehow Teferi's fault, because I hate him. I mean, I'll tell you right now, at least one was his fault. In fact, now that I think about it, two were his fault. So there's the high level, why did it happen? And then there's the specific individual, why did they happen? So the rifts or the time rifts were opening up and fracturing like the fabric of the universe or whatever, it, mostly on uh, Dominaria, I think, because it's like the center of the multiverse. I don't know. Either that or it just had a lot of planeswalkers there doing planeswalker stuff. In fact, didn't Urza live there? He's got to be responsible for half of them. So the rifts occurred in, in a general sense because of the imbalance in the primal forces of the multiverse, not the least of which was the godlike powers of the planeswalkers and the spells that they cast. Just like the actual fabric of space-time, you use too much energy, you rip a hole in it. Black hole, wormhole, whatever. If a photon could travel faster than the speed of light, that would be very bad and rip some crap apart. So the universe seems to naturally self-regulate and have the speed of light. Drastic oversimplification and completely incorrect uh, statement of intent. So each rift was caused by some sort of catastrophe and in almost every case a planeswalker was involved, according to the wiki. And I mean, think about it. Literally anything Urza did. The Silex Blast. Um, I think Karn did some stuff. Then the uh, Teferi or someone... I don't remember who it was, honestly. Then they did something at the school, and there was a rift, and time traveled at different speeds and crap. Well, pre-mending, planeswalkers were able to draw mana in from other planes, as in multiple planes. You use that much energy, your spells are going to be pretty nuts. And those spells and artifacts and other stuff they did individually caused the rifts, but in a general sense, the planeswalkers being too powerful and being able to use too much mana or energy was the cause like at the end of the day that's what it led back to so back in bolusville do i even need to finish that sentence yeah i don't think that god pharaoh spell is going to go very well i think jace has a point now does jace know the nature of the multiverse the history of dominaria and how the mending worked probably not so for him to be referencing this is a long shot but um anyway to continue with the history lesson uh on dominaria uh the time rifts would have repaired themselves naturally. They would have just kind of sealed up over time, evaporated, whatever. But it just got too bad. There was just too much damage. And it was starting to cut off Dominaria from its supply of mana. That's not good because then no more magic. And everybody loves magic on Dominaria. Guys, you don't even know. David Blaine is like huge over there. He does that street magic stuff. 10 million views on Dominaria Tube. So because it was convenient for the story... Uh, when a bunch of planeswalkers, I think they just like sacrificed their sparks or something like that, or I don't know, something similar to that. Whatever they did, they sealed the time rifts, and it was this big, huge sacrifice. And the very last one was sealed by Jessica. And when she sealed the last one, which was in Otaria, all the remaining like more minor fractures uh, basically healed instantly. And then it caused a chain reaction that just stabilized everything back to normal. So it was like damage, damage, damage. Oh no, it's getting out of control. Oh, the fabric of the mana and the ley lines is all screwed up. And then they're like, okay, fix it, fix it, patch it, patch it, fix it. Okay, good. And then it's like, okay, it's getting better, better, better. Boom. And then everything was fixed itself. And that propagated across the multiverse. 
But in order for the multiverse to compensate into a perfectly safe, stable, flawless fixed state, it changed how sparks work, and it just powered them down. No more godlike powers, no more grabbing mana from other planes, although that has been debated and quoted each way since then, and no more anti-aging on planeswalkers. So it powered them down, they can't generate rifts anymore with their stupidity and carelessness, and ta-da, fixed. Universe is good. Oh, then mana could once again flow through Dominaria um, after the mending. Oh, and fun fact, because I've heard this quoted both ways. After the mending, planeswalkers can no longer bring someone with them while planeswalking. Somebody literally just told me like last week, oh yeah, they can do that. Well, they used to be able to do that, but that was part of the mending. And that's actually the first time I've ever heard that. So fun detail. Also, people used to have like planar travel devices, artifacts, technology, all that stuff all stopped working. It became really difficult to travel between planes if you weren't a planeswalker. And theoretically, it became dif more difficult if you were a planeswalker, too. It went from, like, effortless to, like, slight effort from the way I've heard it described. Unless you're the Wanderer, then you just suck at planeswalking. So Teferi, because he's good with that kind of crap, built the planar bridge. It was really difficult, really big, required a lot of power and whatever, but it still can't transport living things or living matter. So the universe caused the mending to happen and tweaked how sparks work so that one being can't get too powerful because that doesn't work very well. And Bolas is trying to use multiple sparks as part of a spell or absorb them to upgrade his or who knows. And enormous uses of power tend to cause rifts like instantly and at the location that the spell was cast. Isn't that interesting? And rifts do all kinds of weird stuff. Really convenient stuff for the storyline, by the way. But, um, like, you can mentally travel with just your spirit through it and then leave your body behind. And, like, I think, like, the rifts were allowing non-planeswalkers to travel in time and also between planes. So they're just literally rips in space, time, and planar, interplanar space. So bulls could cast a spell, cause a rift to happen, and the rift could go anywhere, including back in time. Or the Gatewatch could use the Rift to go back in time. Isn't that interesting? So they could shove Nicol Bolas through the Rift he accidentally created and send him forward in time like Skyrim or to a different plane in space, like the Meditation Plane, for example. Or just use the Rift to go back in time, prepare slightly more for the invasion of Ravnica, prevent it all, prevent the Planeswalkers from dying, or just prevent them from getting drawn to the plane by blowing up the beacon so that oh everybody dies but then they undo it and then they don't need teferi's help because he's a dick except he might be able to like direct the rift or that. who knows i'm you know he knows time stuff so yeah time travel to solve all your problems i think it's coming unfortunately so a lot of you have commented that the artifact between bolus's horns is the gem of becoming that is the number one misconception in all of magic the gathering lore because the actual answer is not in the lore. It's in a specific clarification article written by Wizards of the Coast around 2012. So they printed a card called the Gem of Becoming, and its uh, associated artwork and some other cards and story and whatever were showing it floating between like a dragon skull that looked like Bolus's. So why would Bolus be dead? I don't know. If I recall, he died a couple times. But um, everybody's thinking, oh, between horns, okay, that's the thing that Nicol Bolas has. Maybe he stole it from a different dragon. I don't know. Cool. So that's the thing, right? That's that's the thing. That's what it's called. Everybody wanted to know what it is, what it does. They saw the card. They made assumptions, which, I mean, why wouldn't you? So they posted a very short, very vague article that said, uh, the gem of becoming is not exactly the thing hanging between the horns of Nicol Bolas, the planeswalker, but it's certainly the same sort of thing. So then the article goes on to ask, so here's the question. Why is it a gem of becoming exactly? Because it's from the pools of becoming on Nicol Bolas' private meditation plane. The pools have changed a little since we last saw them, but the decaying tower in the bottom left of the artwork for the card gem of becoming looks awfully familiar. And yes, it's from pools of becoming. It's this weird like vaporizing tower thing. So in other words, the gem of becoming is from the plane, and that picture of it is on the plane, but even though that's a bolus-looking skull, it's 
from a different dragon, from a different timeline, from a different point in time, I don't know. But it's, it is not the same one that is currently between Nicol Bolas's horns right now. But it's from the same plane, made of the same material, and acts the same way. That's basically what they said. So the pools of becoming are one specific location within the meditation plane. What are they? Well, it's... One of the areas, I guess, where most of the water is from, and the water is super relevant to the storyline. I mean, I hate to spoil this, but it already happened. M19 storyline. Um, when Ugin died, his body splashed into the water, and then all the water in the entire plane spilled out of the plane into the interplanar space. When the water slowly came back, like, a ton of years later, so did Ugin for some reason. So Ugin's spirit remained there and then reconstituted his body is, is the best guess. And somehow it had absolutely nothing to do with Hedron's. I don't know. I don't know how he was communicating pe with people back at his grave and having grandma and the obnoxious other people show up there and talk to them in their dreams and crap. No idea. They never even confirmed if his bones were there. I have no idea. I don't even get it. He didn't even die on that plane. That's what doesn't add up to me. He died on that plane, the meditation plane. But anyway, the water resurrected him or he used the water to, re to resurrect himself. Cool. And it was probably at the Pools of Becoming because that's where the water comes from. And the Pools of Becoming are brimming with magical potential, although it takes a master to control their power and put it to beneficial use, according to the wiki page. So in other words, if you're really, really good and experienced with magic and can use a lot of mana, like a dragon, for example, you can use the pools of becoming to do something like make a gem of becoming or make a nearly identical thing. That's kind of like the gem of becoming, which is what Bolas did. And he spent a lot of time there. It said, so that makes sense. So he made himself a handy dandy little trinket. So the meditation plane is a surreal, always changing plane whose geography can mirror the thoughts and potential futures of its inhabitants. So whoever's there, and the more time they spend there, the more it warps, I assume, it kind of matches them and their, their future and their attitude and everything. And some of the times it has been uh, compared to like a mirror, so it, it kind of mirrors who's there. I guess that's supposed to be poetic or something. But it also can show you the future. And the only other oddity about this plane is that uh, Ugin and Bolas, I think, both landed here first when first planes walking. And the other planes were visible via bubbles. They were just like bubbles floating around. And when they like, I don't know, popped one or looked at one or focused on one, something like that, they could like planes walk there. Is that just a side effect of, oh, I'm learning how to be a planes walker and don't know what I'm doing? Or is it something special about the plane where this is some kind of anchor or hub for all other planes? Which is what I thought Dominaria was, but I might have that wrong. And the only time we've seen like a restricted plane is uh, that one bubble that had like 13 planes where you could, couldn't planes walk out of it. And once again, of course, that happened to Dominaria, which is basically the Neverwinter of the magic universe. Yeah, nothing bad or weird ever happens in Neverwinter. I'd love to live there. I think the Silex Blast caused that little restriction thing, and honestly, I think they just copied Stargate SG-1. Kind of depends which one came out first. Uh, then there was uh, Chandelar, the rogue plane that's, like, constantly moving, and you can only jump to it from certain other planes because it's floating around in the multiverse and it's not anchored. So there has been precedent for, like, going two planes from other planes, and also uh, the meditation plane could only be reached by certain people in certain ways from Dominaria. So that's another interesting detail. So it's definitely special. It's weird. It warps itself. It can see the future and it doesn't act like a normal plane. Now, the last thing that I got to circle back to is, hey, didn't I just say that rifts cut mana off completely from entire planes if they're not fixed? I think the Gatewatch is going to realize that that level of power, that concentration of mana, the godlike powers will just instantly rip another rift into the universe and uh, Jace or Teferi or someone will find a way to direct it to the meditation plane. Probably because Vraska's been there, it'll be her idea or whatever. And then they'll send him through it and then cut off all mana to it. So he'll have godlike powers and access to exactly zero mana. So he can use no magic. It was very out of place when they hinted at a couple uh, sets ago that it takes mana to planeswalk. 
or it was like suspected. And they said, oh, I should look into that later. I think it was like Chandra or Jace. They're like, it's odd that different planeswalkers have different methods. I wonder if planeswalking has something to do with their like mana style, magic usage style, color arrangement, you know, whatever. So in other words, yes. So without any mana on the plane, you're stuck there. Isn't that convenient? Now let's look at the artwork from the Gem of Becoming. They're on a different looking, less sunny, less silvery, less pristine uh, version of the meditation plane. It looks kind of dark and apocalyptic and red, but it's still kind of falling apart and looks similar and has very similar structures. But that's a dragon skull. That is a dead dragon right there. And those are bolus shaped horns. And the gem of becoming is still between his horns. So way, way, way back in August 2012, did they foreshadow, if you even want to call a direct image from the future foreshadowing, so did they just secretly, subtly reveal that Bolas dies on the meditation plane somehow? Now, the thing is, during the Kamigawa storyline, he died there once anyway, so like it could just be that, but I don't know. I don't think his body got to quite that level of decay. I mean, he went full-blown, like, Demon Hunter album cover. Like, he dead. Hey, wait, the meditation plane can show people the future, and the future specifically of the inhabitants who spend a lot of time there. So this could be a glimpse just for our benefit of the future. The card, Gem of Becoming, is from the future. And after the gem was disused and not powered up by Bolas, it became a weaker version of itself. So it actually is the same gem, but from the future, which is why they might have been all... Ooh, we're hinting at it where it's like, boy, this looks awfully familiar. And look, hmm, those two towers look similar. And yeah, it's it's similar, but it's not the same. And they didn't just outright say, yeah, two were made or multiple were made. So I think that card is supposed to be the meditation plane showing specifically just us, the players, the future. And they slipped it in like seven years ahead of time. But to my understanding, they do at least have a concept of where the storyline's going that far ahead of time. So I know somebody's going to say it in the comments, yes, I am saying that it's a huge misconception that the gem between Bolas's horns is the gem of becoming because it's not, but secretly it is, but it's a different version from the future. I'm going to go get my tinfoil hat on. And to look even further into the future, if they do somehow later confirm that Nicobolus somehow died there, and that's his skull, remember the plane and the water there are capable of, for some reason, under some circumstances that are unknown to us right now, able to resurrect a powerful dragon. Because it did it for Ugin. And that's news that was hinted at in M19 and then confirmed, like, weeks ago. If that. So even if Nicol Bolas allegedly dies there and they see his skeleton and he's super duper dead, he could come back at any time, which I think we all know either he gets trapped there and then he lets himself out because he'll come back in a future story because they want him back because yay villains. Oh boy, fun and exciting, well-liked, or at least interesting villain. Or they'll just straight up resurrect him for a mysterious unknown reason, which means stop killing people on the meditation plane. It doesn't work. But uh, I, I don't remember how long the actual period of time it took for Ugin to come back to life was. I want to say between 300 years and 1,000 years. Like, it was a long time. And maybe Ugin could do it because he was into that specific kind of magic. Maybe he's the only one who can do that. Maybe he had a plan. I, who knows? So between all that information and very interesting statements on the wiki that were edited not too long ago... I think something to do with rifts, the mending, and too much power, and the meditation plane, and the fact that the gem is from the meditation plane are going to have to do with it. Uh, the defeat of Bolas, I mean. So the only question is, why in this artwork is the, we'll say, gem of becoming version 1.0 beta release, yeah, that's what we should call it, why is it so big? Did they just use a spell to enlarge it and then they shoved it into the rift? Did the rift blow it up? Because it's a piece of the magical meditation plane and you can't let it get too close to rifts? And actually, where was that picture taken? Because there's horns, there's no water, and the tops of the mountains are slowly either disintegrating or being built. <laughs> Integrating? Is that what it would be? I feel like that's not the right term. 
But um, the whole vibe I'm getting from the setting is this is taking place on the meditation realm. So why did they have to blow up the gem so big? Why is Ugin there? And where's Bolas in this photo? I mean, do they trap him in the stone in the meditation realm? That doesn't really match up with a lot of what I just said in this video, but it would make this individual art look correct. Also, this was spoiled today, Prison Realm. Uh, after millennia to craft victory, Bolas had eternity to contemplate defeat. Also, I covered it up, but this is Act 3, according to the bottom of the card. Seems more like Act the End to me. Don't tell me he escapes in Part 4, that would really be something. But the color of the mountains, the background, all that, appears to be the same place from Ugin's giant Eggville. Neither of which actually appear to be the Meditation Realm, so... Did they rename it? Did they reform it? Did they change it? Did they create a second realm that's different but has no mana? And more importantly, no magic water? I'd say they created a second meditation realm within the meditation realm that named it the prison realm, and that's what's in the giant egg, except in that photo, or artwork, I don't think anybody took that photo. Uh, the egg is sitting in the prison realm, so I think they just reform it and remake it and change it, and that is the meditation realm, because his horns are there. Like, why would they do that? So I think that's all that's left, and they just nickname it the Prison Realm. But yeah, pretty confirmed he gets trapped there. Whatever they're doing, it's a lot of energy and a lot of mana because there's lightning all over in the clouds around the little egg thingy. But that is almost definitely the meditation plane. There's no buildings, now it's mountains instead. You're still getting the weird disintegration effect, and all of the water is completely gone, which seems to indicate that someone significant died there because that's what happens. With a, a sample size, an example of one time, when a powerful dragon dies there, all the water goes away. For some reason. And then maybe they trap his spirit inside of the egg so that the water can't put him back together. Or all of the king's men and all the king's horses. Oh yeah, we're going with the Humpty Dumpty reference. And why would the king's horses try to put him back together? They don't even have thumbs. So that's a grand unified theory of multiverse physics and the fabric of physical space-time in the world of Magic the Gathering by Desolator Magic. I think at this point I basically have a PhD in theoretical magical physics, which, uh, strangely enough, completely qualifies me to be a CNN reporter and editorial writer. So I'm going to go hit them up because I need the money, and I'll see you guys next video.